Well, up to 15% of older adults suffer from tinnitus, but it can affect any age. Our resident doctor, Francis Fitzsillis, joins us now to look at the causes and the treatment options for this sometimes quite debilitating condition. Morning, Dr. Francis. Morning, Mel. Uh, let's talk a little bit about it first. What exactly is tinnitus? It's the noise that you hear that people describe as buzzing, high-pitched, roaring, cicadas, chirping or hissing. That's what that is. And is it constant in your ear or is it sort of, does it come and go? It can, everyone's different. It can come and go. Some people hear it more at night when it's quiet. Right. Um, it's supposed to last for more than five minutes to be official tinnitus. Right. Um, and it affects 10 to 15% of adults, often in the older age group. But I think more younger people are going to get this because of the hearing problems that we'll talk about today. Um, most people, it doesn't bother, but 20% of people, it really bothers. Well, I know that with, I kind of get noises every now and again, but they mm. come and go, and they're only there for like maybe 30 mm. seconds or so, and, mm. and then they go, I know. But I can imagine if you had it constantly, it'd be very debilitating. Oh, it would be, actually. And some people's emotional response is so bad that it can really upset you them. you focus on the noise. Mm. So what are some of the common causes mm. of tinnitus? Well, in actual fact, 40% of the causes, nobody knows. Oh, okay. That, Great. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I know. It's, it's not good if you're frustrated with it. Um, then the rest are age-related hearing loss. Mm. Um, the rest after that is loud noise-related hearing loss. Right, mm. and this is where that where it comes in, where you're going to be getting younger and younger and getting it. Because mm. I've, I've, I've wondered a lot with my job uh, on radio, I wear headphones every single day. Uh, lots of kids wearing earbuds and things, they, must, they make a lot of loud noise in your ears. It's true, I've actually researched this. Now, um, 85 decibels, after that level of noise, you start to get permanent hearing loss. Now, the decibels go up exponentially, so 86 decibels is much higher. Right. right. So now, normal headphones will give you up to 120 decibels, up to 120 decibels, right. and earbuds can give you nine more decibels on top of headphones. So why do they make them like that, then, if it's so bad for your ears? I don't know, but I would speculate that people sort of just they just keep turning it up or they you know they can't hear or they turn it up and then they're exposed to this loud noise and so whenever I do do that I try and keep it as mm. down as much as I can but I think we're going to see more younger people um, the other thing is that I've done some research on electromagnetic frequencies like cell phones and that can affect your hearing as well and then maybe you might get tinnitus with that Crikey, so many things mm. involved. Mm. I know that in my house we have the TV very loud a lot of the time because I've got kids doing things and if you want to actually focus on something and they're, they're in the kitchen kicking around, it's very difficult to hear. Mm. So what about the hidden causes maybe that you mm. wouldn't think of? I mean, loud noises, headphones, it seems mm. obvious. What about the things that you don't think of? Well, I think it's important for people who get tinnitus um, to check it out, but... But simple things can be, can be found out that can really help you. Wax in the ear. Mm. Tonic water. Sorry, what? Tonic, tonic water. water. It's the quinine in the tonic water. So if you have too many gin and tonics, you'll get ringing in the ears, so you'll know it's the tonic water. It's the quinine. Oh, my goodness. Some of the medicines, like non steroidal anti-inflammatories and aspirin. But then after that, it's things like chronic sinuses, migraine, neck, internal ear problems, blood pressure, atherosclerosis, head injury, stress, coffee, What's alcohol, or hardening of the arteries. Okay. So if they're sort of narrowed coming up here, it can affect um, the tinnitus. And remember, coffee and alcohol can drain your magnesium, which then causes tinnitus. Right, so so no gin and tonics and no, and no cups of coffee. Well, be aware of it. And, and what's really important is not to miss serious problems, mm. and that's a tumour on your nerve um, near your ear called an acoustic neuroma. And that's why if you get tinnitus on one side or for the first time, you must check it out. Okay, so it's always worth going, I guess the first step would be to get your ears cleaned out and then see what happens from there. See the doctor mm. first. Mm. So what's the treatment then of tinnitus? Well, it all depends on um, what's the underlying cause. So I think obviously first we try and prevent it. Prevent too much loud noise in your life. Um, be aware of it. 
Um, and then there's one condition called Meniere's disease that's got vitigo, tinnitus, hearing loss, attacks of tinnitus, and that specific condition has a specific treatment with medication. Right. You say um, avoid loud noises. I mean, how mm. do you get your kids to do that? This is a difficult it's thing. It's very hard. And also, we've also got a lot of ambient noise in mm. our lives, street noise, other noises. And I think, um, uh, you know, concerts... Um, busy streets. Coffee shops with grinders. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's right. So really, it's very, very difficult. There might be a case to be made for wearing some sort of low-level earplugs all the time, but you might look a bit odd. <laughs> Not that everyone's doing it. So what about medicines for treatment then? Mm. Are there any? There's no specific medicine for the, no the noise-related hearing loss um, tinnitus and the, the, the no-cause-found tinnitus. Mm -hmm. But if people are really struggling, um, doctors use tranquilizers and antidepressants. But there are some alternatives to that? I mean, that sounds well, I mean, extreme on the spectrum. If you look at natural, I've got magnesium for sure. In some cases, helping an underactive thyroid, correcting B12. There's mixed studies on acupuncture and ginkgo biloba stress management um, and you know that's it really mm -hmm. yeah what about techniques I mean are there anything is there anything you can do any sort of helpful techniques well f for people who are affected the small percentage they have got these masker things which um, make electronic noises to hide the tinnitus noises right they, they give you something else to listen to that covers it up or you can listen to music static radio static or like natural noise yeah, yeah or radio sounds so that's for people who really can't cope really with suffer it. from it mm. so finally what would be the take home message i think the take home message is that most people it doesn't cause problems and you don't need any treatment but you need to check it out if it's happening to you for the first time and you need to protect yourself from loud noise. Okay, great. Dr Francis, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Something to think about. And if you are concerned about anything that we have discussed this morning, please contact your healthcare professional.